I am so excited to welcome you back to the launch of season three of the podcast. We take these mini breaks to really just regroup, interview a lot of guests, do the solos, which you all love so much. So do I. And we wanted to come back with a really big bang of an episode that you have all been asking for me to really dive into the depths of, and that is how MWH came to life. And for me, I really think of this episode of building something from nothing. I believe that's where most of us really start. And I love going here and I love going on this journey because I will I will honestly tell you that I stood in my own way for so long, for far too long. And if I can share any ounce of my experience and the wisdom that I've gained from freaking going for it, I will sit down and do that. And that's really what inspired me to having a podcast of sharing these experiences that have really just evolved my entire world, my purpose. And it's turned on this light inside of me that I've always known was there, but it was really dim. And I was really scared. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm still scared with some things that I'm doing, with things I desire that I haven't quite like, you know, dipped my toe in yet. And that is okay. That is all part of this process. I want you to feel all the things that come up because, huh, it's a lot of things that come up and it's a lot of things when you're in the building phase, when you're in the phase of really taking a good hard look at where you are, where you want to continue to go. And I'm going to take you on a little bit of a ride. So buckle up because I'm just going to keep it 100 here with really sharing how this all came to be. I've touched on this in a few episodes, but I think to have a place of how the seed was planted. And for me, the seed was planted from being in a place of pain and of living life with zero fulfillment and really living a life of shoulds because I felt as if I really had no skills on paper. That was truly what I believed because school was always challenging for me. I didn't go away to like a great college. I went to community college and it's always kind of stood in my way that school really intimidated me. I mean, I can tell you right now that I had a lot of help in school. <laughs> I had a lot of friends who helped me. I could barely type then. Right now, it still looks a little like this, <laughs> like the two-pointer fingers when I'm typing. And, you know, I, I think there is this cultural belief or this societal belief that if we're not good in school, then we're not going to excel at anything. And I am just here to let you know that school was one of the hardest things in my life to get through. I could barely write a paper on my own. I was terrified to speak in front of class. I would do anything and anything to avoid those situations. And here we are now. So we are going to leave those negative thought patterns and that way of thinking that weighs us down, that holds us down from seeing our gifts. Because we each have something within us that is so unique and beautiful and why we are here. I really believe we're all here to exercise these gifts in our own unique way. And 
what got me to the place of really understanding um, that I wasn't fulfilled was a lot of being with someone. At this point, I was, you know, I was dating Noah. He was jumping out of bed in the morning, so excited to start his day. He was always enthusiastic you know, very positive about working and he always had so much on his plate, but it never seemed to weigh him down. And here I was, I was modeling, I was taking acting classes, doing some acting, and I just felt like I could barely get out of bed every day. And I, I do think that we experience these lows or these places in our life where we're not motivated for a reason. They are there. These moments are trying to tell you something. They're like knocking on the door like, hello, do you see your energy levels? Do you see how you feel today? And it was a massive awakening for me. And I'll I'll never forget because I was I was supposed to start acting classes. It was like I was, you know, starting the the new semester of acting classes and something inside me was like this isn't it. And by the way, I enjoy acting. Like I I really do enjoy it. It's a hobby. I'm like Maybe I'll do some acting later in life. But it just didn't light me up at all. It wasn't the thing that just kept me going. And I took a weekend to myself. I've shared this so many times with you guys, but really taking a weekend to myself, honing in on the things that made me feel content and happy, and writing it down. When you put the pen to paper, there's something about holding an idea in your mind But when you write it down, it's almost like taking that actionable step to bring it to life. So making that list for me and reflecting on that list at the end of the weekend, I was, it was just so vividly clear that all of the things that gave me energy, that gave me life, that made me feel like I was ready to take on the day were all of the things that I did come back to myself, to take really good care of myself, to wake up, have a grounding meditation practice with myself, to get outside, to go for a walk, take a yoga class. I went rollerblading that day. I mean, it was just, I was like, wow, I'm so happy. And I feel like it was just like the simplicity of coming back home to the things that made my soul smile. And that was a massive pivotal moment because I knew I was like, okay, I'm not going to enroll in acting class, even though I was modeling and everyone was like, you should act. It's like such a natural progression, the the next step. And I decided I'm no longer going to live a life of people's shoulds. And I'm going to lean in to the things that I was really curious about. I was really curious about wellness. I signed up for IIN, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. You know I'm a diehard fan. Um, I shout it from the rooftops. And that really paved a way for me, and it symbolized me going for it. It symbolized me choosing myself to feel the fear and, and to just lean in anyway. And through that year-long course and starting to coach clients on the side, which also, I think this is so important. Although MWH was built, I had no idea. I have to say that again. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had no idea what I was doing, but I just committed to the process of staying curious and of really just committing, committing to this new way of life. And through the commitment, I was able to really start to identify the things that I wanted to spend more time with, that I wanted to hone in and 
give more of my energy. And I, I think this is where, again, like writing things down, making these lists of things. And I had started a meditation practice. I slowly started moving my body in a different way. Here I'm, you know, I was recovering from really living life in a very torturous way. I felt the only way that I could get results or see results in myself was by working out like crazy, was, you know, eating a very specific, disciplined way. And through the work and through really opening my eyes to the way that I believed life had to be. And then having this real self-discovery of like, wait a second, that way wasn't working for me, is what gave me the courage. Courage is something that's going to continue to carry you the more you embrace it. And the more that you embrace feeling the fear and choosing to stay in that courageous state. And that was, that was, I mean, I'm, I'm going to bring you back to like, you know, I, I don't even, this was, I didn't even have 10,000 followers at this time. This is not about a number. This is just to bring some perspective um, to the table, but I would turn on stories and the way that I was feeling in my life I was feeling this aliveness. I was feeling like I was like holding this secret that I couldn't wait to tell. So I would roll out my mat. I would do my meditation. And then I started to move like I loved myself. And I didn't love myself for many years. And the more that I started, you know, every single day I would turn on that camera and we're talking, this is in the the beginning of it all. I had a $24 tripod from Amazon. I filmed everything on my phone. But at this point, it wasn't even really filming the full flows. It was just story clips and story clips. And then it was through the connection of a little community that I was building at that time and feeling really ignited from the community and really honing in on the things that people were also curious about knowing or having me break down um, and share in a deeper way. And it, it was slowly starting to build into this thing that I was really enjoying but once again, had no idea what I was doing. (laughs) And I had some people approach me about, I don't think I've ever shared this. I I had some people approach me about coming onto their app to share my workouts. Now at this time, I was in the process of doing my yoga teacher training with Strala Yoga Massive shout out to Tara Stiles and her team. Um, That was such an incredible experience for me. It really helped me teach in my way. She gave me permission to really show up and do it my way, not how it was being done or how I thought it needed to be done. And then when they asked me to come teach, I, I got certified in Pilates, Pilates mat, And I was like, you know what? This is something I never in a million years. And and when I tell you that, I really, I really mean that. I never saw myself becoming an instructor or teaching or guiding, you know, meditations, workouts, or anything in wellness because I, I wasn't in a place of really seeing myself. But when I take a step back and I look back, to everything in my life, it was always wellness. Everything that I went through, every personal challenge, emotional challenge, physical challenges that I had, that really took me on a ride is what led me to, to this place. So I was like, you know what? I don't know why they're asking me to do this. I have zero history in doing this. I never worked as a trainer, but I'm going to try it on. 
I'm going to try it on. See, staying curious. Curiosity just makes light bulb moments go off. So I started sharing on this app and, you know, they had a lot of trainers, a lot of celebrity trainers, and they would come to me and they're like, wow, people are really responding to you. It's like, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. So I I kept doing it. I built an incredible little community there. When people stop me to this day and they're like, I'm like a day one. And they tell me the story of like, I'm like way before Melissa platform. And I'm like, wow, it just, it makes me like beam ear to ear. It was so new to me and it really opened up a world of possibility. It was a moment of me having people believe in me before I really believed in myself. But the more that I did it and the more I built a connected community, wow, the power of community makes you come to life because you just realize this isn't just about you. This is about being in your power and really embracing the the essence to to serve in such a beautiful, profound way of, of really identifying the things that are your thing, that are your gift. We all have a gift is it's really magical. And I think that's the way to describe how this all started for me. I started to see the magic within myself for the first time. And it was really awesome getting to know kind of how to speak to people through the screen and also just how to show up and do this thing in my own way every day. And it it got to a place where I was like, okay, the calling is deeper and I'm really feeling like I have to I have to go for it. I have to make this my own because it's a feeling that you feel. I don't believe every single person is meant to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work and not that everything else isn't work, but it's not it's not for everyone, but I remember when I was 7 years old This is right after my parents got a divorce. And I just remember this very vivid picture of me in a power suit. Kind of crazy because you know I love a power suit now. But it was like the blazer and the pants. And I just saw it and I always connected to seeing myself in that way. And now as I reflect on that, I'm like, she was always in there. I was such a little bossy girl growing up. So it just makes perfect sense. And this was a moment where I could have stayed in a place where I didn't have to deal with anything when it came to technology It was a really safe, comfortable place to stay in, or I could take this leap of the unknown and freaking go for it. And I did. I built the shittiest website. I had at that time, oh, the paywall was the bare minimum, but you know what? I did it. I did it. I started somewhere. And I started, I mean, this is so interesting because to bring you so far back, this is when I had, I believe it was, there were 12 workouts at a time. And every Monday I would release a new workout and the last workout would go away. Still don't know where it went, (laughs) but the next, you know, and then The following Monday, there would be a new workout that came in. It would push that new one um, down the slot a little bit. Don't ask for the theory. There really was no theory. It was just throwing shit up against the wall. And that's how you start. (laughs) You just test. You just try things on. And for me, it was, you know, going from a place at that point, having no one work for me, 
It was me, that tripod and the phone by myself, and then really understanding I wasn't really good at like admin or, I mean, I didn't edit a thing, you guys, literally from start to stop. I kept everything in where I'd walk up, I'd press the button, I'd turn around. And that is where I had learned to move away from perfection because I was such a perfectionist. And I really think perfection stands in the way of any progression in your life. You got to let that shit go. You have to. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm telling you my site was awful, but I had a website and I did that for as long as I could until I realized that I outgrew that platform and I slowly started hiring a couple people, literally two people. We built another website with another paywall, which was, you know, it was a more enhanced experience than what we had. We were slowly growing and that's what it's all about. And getting to the point where, you know, we, we got to the point as well where we hit the ceiling. There was no space for growth. And one thing that I think is essential, this is the most essential part of the process, is honing in and coming back to your why. Why, in the first place, have you chosen to do this thing? to build this thing, to grow this thing, to groom this thing, to come back to this thing every single day. And for me, it was because I had lived in such a painful place for most of my life that I knew I wanted to take that pain that I knew I wasn't the only one feeling, that so many other people were feeling. And I could feel that. I'm such an empath. I can feel it. And I wanted to use that and turn it into my purpose. So when I start to question or get scared of these, the growth moments um, or growing pains, I really come back to why I'm doing this and to why I think of, I think of that, that person who doesn't believe in themselves, doesn't love themselves, doesn't think there's any other way, thinks everything is impossible. That's who I wake up for every single day. I wake up to just plant a seed of hope that I can show and guide in a different way, in an enjoyable way, of a way of learning to love yourself. And it's what has helped me grow my team from, I mean, from three employees to almost 25. And that's not even including all of the creators and all of the things, but that was scary as hell for me because I, I took an Enneagram recently and I am a number eight for anyone that wants to know what that means, active controller, which makes perfect sense because that was definitely me growing up. And it's I still see a lot of that within me now. So it's learning to let other people do things, (laughs) to let people do the things that you're not so great at. Delegating is probably, I want to say it was one of the most challenging things for me because I've just always been the type of person that I'm like, I can do it. I can do it. It's no problem. I'll do it. You know, I, I, I do things great or I can do it better mentality. And I'll tell you what that does. That creates immense burnout. And there is just zero longevity in that way of, of being. And for me to really identify that I want to spend time connecting deeper to the community, to giving the community more of what they want, which is how and why I brought in creators as well, because I'm only one person. And knowing that when you share the room and when you share the love with powerful people, it just makes everything that much more impactful. And it 
naturally just makes things expand. So being able to give more, but to also give myself the space to hone in more on the things that have made this all come to life is it has to be done. And the only way that could be done is for me was hiring a COO, hiring a head of marketing, hiring a head of tech, head of finance, um, head of partnerships. I mean, the list goes on because I could no longer do every single thing that I was doing or it just wouldn't be where it is. And it, it was a slow build. You know, at first I had someone on freelance. I paid them what they could. And you start and you you meet yourself where you are. Maybe you work off trade. I mean, I know a lot of people that even in the, you know, the wellness fitness space will train their clients or work out with their clients or guide them in meditations to have them help with marketing or content strategy or whatever it is. I think it's it's really important for you, and I'm also working with an executive coach right now, which has been groundbreaking, <laughs> massively groundbreaking. I've had Melissa Wood Health for eight years, and I almost want to say I wish I did it sooner, but honestly, I think time is of the essence, and sometimes, no, not sometimes, you have to, you have to just make a lot of mistakes. I've made plenty of them. I still make plenty of them. I make them daily. And for anyone out there who is also a perfectionist or a recovering perfectionist, I think it's there's something to be said about owning your mistakes. There is so much strength in that. And just recognizing when you're wrong or you've made a mistake or maybe you've said something that you wish you didn't say. One thing that I feel has become my strength is being able to recognize that and say, you know what? I was wrong. You guys were actually right with the vision that you were thinking and I'm sorry. And we, we move on and we, you know, we go into building that next strategy and working on the execution because it's all about that. It's all about having everyone collectively do the thing that they're so good at to bring that one vision and that why, like why are we doing this to life and executing that to the fullest potential, which is a lot easier said than done and working on strengthening company culture and moving myself away. This is what I'm working on right now. Moving myself away from being known as the CEO and the founder of MWH as, you know, like making a lot of approval decisions. My coach was like, what if we could, you know, change the language there where it's not about approvals, but it's about your input, right? Let's Let's empower your team to make these decisions as if you would so that you can have checkpoints and input. And that was like a really, like, that was a great moment for me of being like, oh, yes, I like that. I like that. In all honesty, this is all just a forever work in progress. It's something I'm really, I'm really working on managing the load. And I think a lot of the release for me has come in just being really clear. And also this is, this has been, um, this has been game changing for me. So every meeting that I attend at the end of every meeting, I'm, I write a little note. I'm either drained from the meeting, the meeting gave me energy, or I asked myself, did I really need to be in that meeting? A lot of meetings really can be covered over email. And I think that that's just a constant work in motion is really understanding how to shorten and strengthen every meeting so that it is 
It's just impactful for everyone's time. Highly recommend doing that for all my, um, for, for really everyone out there. I think it's, it's important from every angle and every position to just really be clear with, with how you're feeling and, and how, how you're spending your time because we spend most of our time at work and I, I know for myself going from a place of just feeling and knowing that I wasn't living my purpose to now living and breathing my purpose, it changes everything in your life. It changes the way that you show up for yourself, for your family, for your team, for your community. And if there's anything out there that... I can do to help just empower and strengthen anyone out there, whether you are an actor, a dentist, want to be a doctor, whatever the profession is, I think it's it's with the clarity within ourselves, getting really, really clear, being honest with ourselves every step of the way. Like right now I'm in a place where I'm like, I love what I'm doing, but there's something else. And I think that's good. I think that's where the gold within our lives live. It's being on this constant quest with ourselves and asking ourselves, this has been it for a really long time. And, and by the way, I promise you I'm not going anywhere. I love what I do. But there, there's, you know, I know I want to do more motivational speaking. And I'm writing it down and I'm envisioning and I'm thinking of all of the places I want to do it. And I, I think that's what keeps us in this beautiful space of continuing the curiosity and just like flirting with life and the realm of possibility. Because there is so much possibility out there. And getting yourself to a place where you know it and you believe that there is something more. And then getting crystal clear with, with like what it is. What do you, what do you like doing is, is how we create this movement of, I I think, like real inner happiness and contentment. And I know for myself that we all have something really powerful to give. We We are all here. I said this in the beginning and I'll say it again for a unique purpose. And our mission in this life is to fulfill it to our fullest, most possible potential. And I promise you, as a girl from Syracuse who grew up poor and and had nothing growing up and never believed in myself, that when you put your mind and your focus and your intention to what it is that makes you feel like you can fly, And you come back to it every day and you continue working on it even when you don't want to. And you keep honing in and you groom it. Just like you you take care of a newborn baby and you keep coming back to it and you just give it all the love and contentment that it needs. Anything is possible. Anything is possible when you put your mind to it. You keep doing the work. I want you to put your head down. Keep doing the work. Stop talking about everything that you want to do and start taking those baby steps to do it because never in a million years would I have ever imagined that I would be here with you, that I would be doing what I'm doing. But now I know I'm like, let's keep going. Let's all keep going. Because there is just endless, endless opportunities and possibilities for each and every one of us. I love you guys, and I mean that. I hope you feel that from the depths of my soul. Because this right here, sharing these messages with you, 
is why I know with every cell in my body that I have been put on this earth. I love you. 